the case of uh, coronavirus that we have confirmed in the country. I want to appreciate your emphasizing the methods of prevention and I want to appeal to the population to seriously practice the measures that His Excellency has clearly elaborated again and again. It is time for the entire population, wherever you are, to be on high alert and report all cases with signs and symptoms, or all persons rather with signs and symptoms. Our toll free numbers so that samples can be obtained and we analyze these samples very quickly in order to ensure that our populations are safe. Again, as His Excellency has clearly elaborated, the district authorities need to be in charge. There are district task forces in all the districts. My humble appeal to you is to ensure that your district task forces are active and doing what we have trained them to do over the years on the various outbreaks. And specifically, to be able to ensure that those places that His Excellency has clearly stated where there is mass gatherings is stopped immediately. His Excellency mentioned the issue of uh, the possibility of orofico. Yes, it has been observed in many places, but more analysis is ongoing on this. Uh, it has been observed and reported, but more analysis is still ongoing. And uh, as scientific information continues to come, we will make that statistics available. I want to particularly appeal to those who were on the plane with the confirmed case. There were 84 passengers. We have their information. When we call upon you, please make yourself available for purposes of follow-up. Thank you. Anything else? Mr. Nero? Thank you very much, Your Excellency, for the comprehensive uh, coverage of the issues, the key issues. I just wanted to emphasize on uh, or comment on something that you, uh, you asked us. Is it possible for an asymptomatic case to pass on the virus? Uh, the evidence from where this uh, disease has so far been is that yes, it is possible uh, for a case which has the, where people are not coughing to pass on the virus. How? Um, I think if, like, when you breathe, even when you are not coughing, when you talk, when you, the virus can come out. Because, like, this one, they just swabbed the nose and it was coming. It, they were able, they just swabbed the nose and the virus is there. So, and uh, information from, um, especially the cases in Europe, is that for about 50% of the cases, they actually cannot trace the source. Meaning that the source who infected that person did not have symptoms. Mm. Yeah, did not have symptoms. But how, whether it is the hands, because people are touching, because the virus is there, so you touch, it is a bit irritated still, even if you're not coughing, and even when you speak, something may come out. So some people have been infected, but you cannot trace from those who have come up and been tested, you cannot trace the source. And uh, this is also the challenge. Uh, the virus can move in the population for a while without you noticing it, if it comes across only healthy people. So they are healthy, they will not develop disease, but they can still spread the virus. So that means, mm. that means uh, he was not coughing, mm. he was not quite uh, amra, mm. what they call sneezing out, but 
either he was breathing nearby you. Mm -hmm. When you bring you breathe nearby, does it bring droplets? What do you call droplets? What is the mod? Just breathing. Just breathing without coughing, what comes out? Yes. Yes. Your Excellency, um, we have this in a number of diseases. We call them asymptomatic carriers, or you have nasal shedders, people who shed through their nose. Um, there was one, a famous one, who was baptized typhoid Mary, was a person who had typhoid bacteria in their nose. They were not sick. They did not have diarrhea. They did not have fever. They did not have any symptoms. But she kept shedding this uh, uh, bacteria from her nose, and she was working uh, with food and ended up spreading it to an entire community. So but shedding how? By, by blowing her nose? Blowing the nose, but even small droplets come when you're, when you're breathing. Small droplets uh, come, you touch the nose. No more, breathe, no more breathing? Yes, yes. When and you are breathing, some uh, what you call droplets are, are tiny, liquid-like. Exactly. If you, put, if you put a glass or a cold surface, you'll see them. You'll see you know, moist uh, particles appearing. Or well, they will gather there? Yes. They come as what? As vapor? Yes, they are micro, uh, uh, small um, uh, droplets. Mm -hmm. Yes, small drops of water, very, very tiny, mm -hmm. that you, you may not easily detect, but they carry the virus. Mm -hmm. and, and then that goes into the, into the, to the hands if they touch. Or, or, or just it goes even into the environment. So if that person is working with sensitive uh, items like uh, utensils for eating, mm. then it can easily be spread. And this typhoid Mary, I think, worked in a kitchen. And so all the people who were passing there got affected. Mm. Yes. So, but, but again, don't we, don't we go back to the... So, but, but in this case, it would mean that this person could sit with us in a taxi, and although he's not coughing, but because of breathing. Yes, so uh, that means the, that risk is there, mm. but it is much lower. Because when you sneeze, you, you eject with a lot of force the particles come out at a high speed, up to 150 kilometers per hour. So they, they are able to distribute. But the shader is just a slow little uh, uh, drip of, of these droplets. Mm. So they are not as infectious. Mm. Then I wanted to make a comment on the oral fecal route. Uh, what has been shown is that up to 50% of the, the uh, affected people, by, uh, people who are sick have symptoms in their intestines. That is diarrhea, stomach pain, and they are shedding the virus through, through their intestines. So, so there's a, a possibility of oral fecal route for which we again have the same preventative me measures to boil water, uh, to, to, wash. To, to wash your hands, mm -hmm. and, uh, and ensure good hygiene. Mm. Maybe the the last point uh, um, is on the testing. The testing that is currently the most sensitive and the, the, the best way to test is uh, using samples taken from the nose or the, the back of the throat or the mouth. And we just take off the swab, and these swabs are available. Um, the health workers can come where the people are, take off the swabs, even though the testing facility is in one place, uh, samples can be taken from anywhere in the country, so people uh, shouldn't be concerned. And that transported how? They can be transported. The, the swab itself has a transport medium, um, some little liquid, which preserves the virus in it. So once you, you, you take the sample, put it back, it can be transported from anywhere in the country, and the sample remains uh, viable. Mm. Yes. 
Excellency, let me explain how the samples are taken. They are small tubes which have swabs, like a stick, like these things for the earbuds. So those, to the, those uh, earbud things, are, they have their own bottles. So when you open the top, it comes with that kind of earbud, which is used to swab, and then you put it back into the bottle. Mm. Then it is sealed and packaged. Now, it is taken to what we call hubs. Our hubs are the laboratories that package it and put it on the poster bus. And it's taken directly to UVI. How many are there in Uganda, those? The hubs? There are 100 hubs oh. all over the country. So that means uh, if you take uh, the Vateso, they would have how many hubs? They have about 10 hubs. Those are Vatesos? If oh. you say the whole eastern area. Mm -hmm. Because the Vatesos penetrated the. Uh, no, 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 I mean the Bateso in their homeland, not where they invaded, but uh, <laughs> they are... <laughs> they are like Excellency, they are about five. Okay. Yes. So the Bateso would be having a Bateso Teso, the other Teso. Yes. Uh, including the, the Kumam, uh, who, who, are, who are neither Teso nor something, they, they are half. So those ones would have five places. Yes. Uh, and the Basoga would have like how many? Because I want to see whether there's anybody who is neglected in terms of where they can uh, reach. Excellency, nobody is neglected. Yeah. No, from what the experts are saying, because if they say the Teso area, which has got like 10 districts, uh, has five points, what they call hubs. The, the bottle, you can carry it anywhere. Yes. You can even take it to a village. Yes. Then you take the, the, the smear, yes. what they call the swab, you put it back in the table, in the bottle, then you transport the bottle to the, to the hub. Yes. And like if we take the test area, there are at least maybe five points. Mm. I, I think you can, in, later on you can, you can say these hubs are here, you can mention them on the radio so that people know where they are. Mm. So that testing should be easy. Uh, then they bring to Entebbe, uh, they, they test, then they, they will tell you. Mm. So for me, in, in spite of this shading, because they, they are saying there's somebody who can have this virus peeling off, peeling off his nose, even if he's not coughing, even if he's not sneezing. But even people like Okia agree that it doesn't go far. Uh, it seems this this period may end up by ending up with the, the touching, uh, contam contaminating the surfaces. So if you handle the 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 the, 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 the not touching yourself in the sensitive parts, you eliminate and the washing, you eliminate a, a lot of, uh, of problems. Anything else, Atwine? No, I, uh, I just wanted to refer to when you are saying that asymptomatic is only when you are not coughing and when you are not sneezing. Asymptomatic means that you don't have any signs. So if you have fever and you are not coughing, you still have a symptoms. symptom. That is also a symptom. Mm. Um, from the research now that is the information that is coming out of the countries that are affected the majority of the, the people start infecting like two days before the symptom start mm. but the majority of the people infect when symptoms start and those symptoms mainly 
and, 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 and the how you can even slightly differentiate between COVID flu-like symptom from the normal flu is that while in the normal flu you begin with sneezing and, and watery eyes and now this side, this side of COVID you begin with, flu, with the fever and, and sore throat and cough. The sneezing is mild. The, 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 the COVID patients are, are less sneezy compared to the flu ones. And, and the cough of COVID tends to be very dry. Dry. They are no, it's not wet. When somebody's coughing, it, 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 it tends to be um, at early stage before the, you, you get deep pneumonia, real pneumonia, you, you, you are not producing a lot of mucus. It's just irritating kind of dry cough. Mm. But also I wanted to mention that this virus only goes in the sinus mucus membrane. It does not go to any other part. It does not, for example, someone was asking that, does this COVID get transmitted sexually? It is not, although we are talking about mucous membrane of the, of, of the, of the private parts, it does not, it, it does not affect the, it does not, is not transmitted sexually. It, it only, it, it's like flu, like, and, and, and any other flu like uh, um, virus, it goes for the, the sinus mucous membrane. That's why if you avoid touching here, then you can easily uh, uh, de de defeat this, this, this virus. Um, I wanted to also to, to mention, because on the social media, and uh, I was reminded here, that, that someone was asking that when, you te when we tested this person, why did you let everybody go away? That time, the, 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 the testing, we know people are moving. We, the, the, the airport is extremely crowded. And it is very risky to keep people crowded in, in one place. So we try to move as many patients, I mean as many people from the airport as quickly as possible so that we avoid crowding. Crowding alone is a risk factor. So this person had to go on the side and retested. By the time we finished, the other people had gone through, but, but the majority of those people were not coming from Category 1. Category 1 are, uh, countries are the ones that had high, high burden of, of the disease, and with, we, we, the risk was higher. And it was not possible to quarantine everybody from, the, from that plane. The other people were advised to go home and self-quarantine. The fact that they were traveling and they were from Ethiopia, others were from other countries, although they, they are coming from countries that are affected, but the numbers were very, very small. So we're not, we, we, we were mainly concentrating, because of the burden on, and, the, and the, the, the risk involved, we did not ask them to, 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 to go into, into institutional quarantine. But today, because of our case, now we have agreed that we are going to do everybody who comes this time, whether you are coming from a country that has five cases or 10, or 100 or 500, everybody is going to be subjected to institutional quarant. Because this one, it has shown that even this particular uh, person came from Dubai and, and, and most likely got the infection from Dubai. The, 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 the other thing on, on Orofico, we get, uh, the, the, the virus gets into the digestive system because of swallowing of the mucus, the mucus that is contaminated in the throat, in the throat, in the nose, in the, in the back of the, of, the, of the throat. So the mucus, someone swallows. When some, that person swallows, the virus goes in the, in the, in the mucus and it, it, it goes into the gut it goes into the, 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 the fecal. We have not really had very, because this disease is very new, we have not really had very, very good data to see whether this virus actually stands the acid, the, the acid in the gut and it comes out and it is alive and, and it stays and it can, it, it can actually infect. So we, we have very limited data, 
but maybe with time we will get more information once research is able to to show us uh, based on the, on the evidence lastly we want also to to remind the hotel people the ones where we are taking our people for for quarantine we want them to be vigilant and making sure that their workers are not exposed we want the hoteliers to to make sure that the people who work in their in their rooms have masks because they don't know who is who is well and who is not well but also the clothes they 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 clean from the hotel and the cleaning we want the 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 workers to be properly protected with protective gloves and masks and make sure that the beddings are ironed once you iron if there is anyone shedding the virus definitely it will not survive thank you very much okay Musani will be the last Okay, dear viewers, I think everybody has become very science, including His Excellency. So uh, what does all this science mean for us? The explanations that uh, has been provided in very simple ways for all of us to understand the justification for the measures that are being taken. Uh, we've been receiving cases of people who are escaping, for example, sneaking on Friday to go to church to pray at night. Now, you are putting yourself at risk because if somebody is shedding, it's not really that government wants to punish you, but because pe somebody could be there because this virus moves through the breathing. Any gathering, the interventions are avoid mass gatherings. Wash your hands with soap and water. The people in the rural areas, stay at home. Go to your garden and stay at home. Avoid those evening meetings in the trading centers where people from everywhere gather. Limit visitors. Uh, the people who are trying to sneak, you know, my person has died for us, we have to be there. You will end up getting COVID, so it's not to punish you. If we work together during this season, we will bring down the epidemic very, very fast. Then we'll go back to our normal lives. So we are requesting uh, the public to cooperate. Cooperate with the ministry. Cooperate with the people who are close to you. And then um, what the minister said about the collecting of the swabs, just go to the health center. You don't need to know where the hub is. The system is there. Just go to the health centers. They have been telling you. The people at the health center will know how to get the swab to the hub. Your role is just to go to the health center, and you, are, you will be assessed if you qualify. If you fit the case definition, then they will pick the specimen. It is not your responsibility to find where they are testing. Just go to the health center. If we work together, we'll be able to get rid of this. We'll be able to work together, and the, the country will be back to normal. Thank you. Okay, I thank my team, and I want to put the example of China, that, that city where the whole thing started. Now, they are no longer getting the garden where everybody can go and do what he wants. In China, once the government says this, the, 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 that's what is done. And that has been the difference. That's why at one time they, they, they locked down that province of, of Hubei, which has got 58 million people. All of you stay in the house. Don't move out. Now here, we, we, we are just making fun of ourselves. And, and, and we are just endangering ourselves. The, uh, so, now finally, I, I want to really to the campaign of uh, Tamanya, uh, ignorance. We have been trying to get some schools. But now that the, the, the children have gone home, 
We could get some schools to quarantine these people there instead of wasting money in hotels. But then I'm told that some people are superstitious. 